In this video, we're going to be taking a starter like this off a Rover V8 and making it into this, which is a nice usable object, very, very cheaply. You'll be surprised. Stick around. And I thought I'd have a look at this starter motor that I removed from the Disco 2. It's a commoner garden V8 starter. And I've just rigged it up to my battery here, as you would on a car. So there's a ground, there's a positive. And this little wire here goes to this switch here. So I can go like this. Now wait a minute, hold on, hold on. This was reported as a non-starter. So this is really bizarre and it's got me wondering what the heck is wrong with it. Why did it stop? You can see it's got plenty of power. <laughs> plenty of talk. So why is it when you turn the key it clicked and we put a new starter on and it works straight away? Could it be simply the wiring connection on here, this thing here? Well, it possibly is, but how would we know? <laughs> anyway, there's a new starter on there and it should be good. So I thought it was just a something to do. Why not take this one to bits and have a look at it? So let me get set up. So, uh, starter motor, Bosch. Don't usually give much trouble but it is a bit dirty and we are going to get into it now one of the biggest problems is these screws here getting them out of the solenoid so what I intend to do is pop this through the sandblaster clean up here to see if we can get that solenoid off because that's really going to help strip this down well that was a jolly good uh, thing to do I give it a quick sandblast all over and if you can see here, once I've cleaned out the, the heads, they're actually Torx bolts. They're not uh, Phillips or a socket, an Allen key. And also it's cleaned up the back so you can see the screw in here that holds this cover on. This little cover here. So that, in effect, is not too bad. So we can now take this to bits. Whoops. There we go, we can take the bits. What I'm going to do is take that nut off there, off the starter. And it should be a 13. Yes. Careful not to lose it because it's a thin one. And also the, the little washer that's on there. Try and grab that thing. And come off. Beast. Oh, there's a little tab on there. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, that comes off with a starter wire. Oh, it's got a little uh, locating pin on it here. So that's all right. That's out the way. Now these uh, torques here. What are they? I'm not very good with torques. That's a bit too loose. T28. T28 does the job. Nope, oh, no, it doesn't. That's that buggered. My, uh, oh, bloody thing. The T28 I've got here isn't the best. It's been a bit rounded off. I'm going to try it by hand. See if I can get this off. I doubt it though, because it's it's all turned. Yeah, that's ripped off. Hmm, what a rip off. So, that's going to make life interesting getting into there. I don't know who this Mr. Torx chap is, but I'd like to go across and give him a punch on the nose, because I don't know why he came up with this... Oh, she came up with this idea of 
this is the best of things since sliced bread for screws. Obviously you've never tried to get them out. Because um, once I've got paint in they're a bugger to get anything in and the the depth of contact is very very shallow. I don't even think I'm going to get these out, I think I'm going to have to drill them out. Because these ain't going to budge. Oh, they're round enough, so let's drill them out. We need a drill. Last one. seat started to jump off. <sighs> Fortunately, see everything gets full of sand. I can go down to my electrical shop tomorrow and get three new screws. As the starter on the Land Rover with the 300 TDI with the rubber cover on here, so we're going to be careful with that, we don't want to break it. So we're going to try and prise out that rubber under here, if we can. Doesn't look like it, so we're going to put that on hold. And then try and get these screws out of the back of here. Oh, fortunately they come out. I'm going to cock them in and carry on in there. Now under here should be a little cap. You know it's had so much paint on it, nothing comes off. There. And there is the little C clip we're looking for. So there's the washer. Now that wait a minute. Hold on, we need to take this off and take it off as a unit. So we might have to hold on to that thought and put that C clip back on. Right. I don't know why I actually am. I don't know why I actually am doing this because I must have about ten of these started. I was just curious to see what was wrong with it and why it wouldn't start. Right. There we go. There. There we are. And that's all there is to it. Now that will hook off there. This will stay on here. This is full of sand. Now what happens next? Oh, let's have a look at these screws. Will they unscrew by hand? Nope. They're tight. And I'll come out with a pair of pliers now. Oh, they've, <laughs> they've had thread lock on them. Can you see? Thread lock and torques. What a great combination. Anyway, we'll get those out later. Let's concentrate on here. Because I don't want to take all that lot to bits, but I want this piece taken out. There's our sun and planet that we're going to clean up. See, that's how it works. Little gear turns a big one, gear reduction. Yeah, sand everywhere, but I was going to clean it out anyway, so I wasn't really bothered about that. Now, the next thing, by keeping that clip on here, we're going to take our hammer. Not the amateur. And that should take out our brush pack. Hope it gets a bit hard. There we go. One starter stripped down. Now there's a capping in there. 
that should knock out. So now we can get on our merry way and clean all this lot up. Now what do the brushes look like? This is what we're interested in, the brush pack. Now that thing there should come off here. Obviously it's not, it doesn't really matter too much. The brushes look extraordinarily good. You can see they're right at the tops, so they haven't really done all that much. So I think a washing a brush up is an order of the day. So let's do that, let's clean off these casings, give them a paint up, and uh, let's see what they're like. This starter motor is absolutely perfect. I can't find any faults with it whatsoever. I'm not going to go through testing and stuff like this with multimeters. It turned, it started, everything looks beautiful. So all I'm going to do is simply put it back together. I'm going to put a few drops of oil in that bush up there. It doesn't need much luck. I'm going to put the washer on there. C-clip on here, if it will. Yep. And then I'm going to put the little cover on when I can find it which is here, but I'm going to give it a bit of a wash out first. Right, after uh, washing it out, and there you can see the end result, um, there was quite a bit of rubbish in there. Dried grease, so we're going to just put a little bit of uh, red grease in here. This isn't brake grease, this is just regular grease. And this will act like a wick um, to lubricate those parts. We'll put that on top of there. Then we get our screws. Two little screws. Oh, wait a minute now, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on guys, we've got to line up the holes for the screws to go into because it it does two things, it lines up on this back plate as well. And remember we haven't taken the brushes out or anything. I thought there was a hole in the end for greasing. Lucas ones used to have a little hole in the end you can put a bit of oil in. These Bosch ones don't so they obviously are relying on a bit of grease. Right, that's that done. Oh, brick cleaner on my phone. And no dirty phone calls there. Um, so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to assemble these two parts together. And we're going to put everything back together as it was. We're not going to bother with much at all. This turns beautifully. So we want that in there like that. And it being a magnet, it tends to want to go itself like that. Now, once that's like that, we're going to give it another degrease and paint. Yeah, look, I've already painted the, uh, the solenoid, so that's good to go. So we'll put that somewhere safe. And we're going to paint this piece with a bit of black trim plate. Light coats, always remember with painting it's light coats from a distance. Maybe can give the copper thing a go, I don't care. Now I've already done this piece, see this is uh, aluminium, this has been through the wet bead blaster, it looks really nice. Next thing I've got to do is make sure that that, bush, that uh, needle roller in there isn't really clean. So we're going to again use our brake cleaner. And this little needle gun here that we've got, this, I don't know what this is for, blowing up balloons or something like that. Give that a good old blowing out, make sure that there's no, no dirt in there. That might take some time, so I'll be back shortly. Uh, so while we're talking about cleaning stuff up, we've just taken this uh, assembly here, we had a look at it, seems nice and clean. Um, yeah, nothing seems untoward here. This little roller's good. But in here, we have these little uh, planet wheels and inside there, there are needle rollers. So 
Now what we're going to do, we're going to take the needle roller, pack them with grease, each and every one of them. Don't, don't leave any out. No. Pack them in. A little finger full of grease, pack them in, and then from the side you put your grease in, put the gear in. And then a nice generous splodge of grease all the way around those gears like that. And they will last for years and years and years because the grease can't evaporate. One problem is about when you use oil, oil can evaporate, grease doesn't. Well, it's lower than, you know, the evaporation point of oil. It's only that he's soap, soap with oil in it, but this, it just helps it to cease, uh, cease to dry out quicker. Now in the middle there, you can see there's a bushing. We get a dob and push that into the bushing. Uh, all the rest of it, well it doesn't really matter too much, we're going to put some grease around this shaft anyway for when we assemble it, but it feels really good. Now if you've got problems with this clutch here, you have to replace the whole assembly, which is pretty bad, but you can see this now, it's good, it's good for years and years and years. So, next thing, put the top back on your grease, very, very important. So all we've got to do now is wait for the paint to dry. See all the bits are down here waiting to go. Wait for the paint to dry. Hmm. Back shortly.